Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Menander's play *Perokinomene*, or the shaven headed, or the girl with the shaven head. Um, so, like *Aspis*, uh, only maybe 40 to 50 percent of *Perokinomene* survives, and so it's a very difficult play to come to terms with. But whereas with Aspis and with, with some of Menander's other plays. Um, so with Aspis, it's, you have several acts that are mostly intact and then several acts that are virtually gone. With Pedarcanomene, you have a slightly unusual situation where you've got sort of the middle portion of each act, but then the beginnings and the endings are largely gone. So, as always, the Oxford World Classics editors have given some speculation about what happens in the missing pieces, but because, because we've got little sections from each of the acts, it's actually, in some ways, a much more difficult play to come to grips with than some of the others. So, uh, I'm going to try and give you a, a, a quick plot summary, um, and then I'll, I'll make a a point that's particularly interesting about this play, um, similar to to uh, what we saw with Aspis, actually. So, Perakinomene begins with uh, Polymon and Glycera. Um, so, Polymon is a soldier, Glycera is his mistress. Um, it opens with him basically accusing her of having taken another lover and he cuts her hair uh, or shaves her head. Uh, and so one of the things that you, you want to be aware of is that in the ancient world, especially the Eastern Mediterranean, hair was deeply significant. Um, I think this was more the case in the Near East, uh, the Levant, so among Canaanites, Israelites, uh, Persians, people like this, uh, more so necessarily than in Greece itself, but in, in Greece this was the case as well. Um, hair was a symbol of sexuality, it was a symbol of identity, um, and in some cases it was it was sacred. Um, and so to, to cut a woman's hair, to shave a woman's hair, was um, in some Near Eastern cultures, in some uh, Eastern Mediterranean cultures, uh, a really, really severe punishment. So, again, I, I think in Greece this wasn't necessarily as uh, significant, a, as terrible as it was uh, among, say, the Canaanites or the Phoenicians or, or uh, the Israelites, but in, even so, this is a, a pretty substantial public humiliation uh, uh, of Glycera. So, uh, she goes next door to uh, the home of... Da, 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 da. Oh, uh, Mirene, uh, who is Moshion's foster mother. Moshion is the guy that uh, Glycera is accused of taking as a lover. Little do they realize that they are actually twins who were uh, exposed at birth by their father, Patikos, uh, after his wife died. So he left them out on a hill or whatever it is, as you did in ancient Greece when you had kids you didn't want. Um, and so they were found. Uh, one of them was raised by, uh, um, I forget, a, sh a servant or something. Uh, so so Glycera was raised by servant or something like that. Um, uh, Malchion, her brother, was given to uh, Mirone. Uh, who raised him. She's a wealthy whatever it is that she does. Um, 
she's not really a character in it very much. She's just sort of there. Um, over the course of the play, this sort of set of misrecognitions both creates problems, um, particularly in the sense that Moshian is in love with Glycera, not realizing that she's his sister. Poly, uh, Polymon uh, thinks that uh, Glycera is in love with Moshian, uh, not realizing that actually Glycera let uh, Moshian kiss her because she knew he was her brother, so she let them, she let him kiss her as a sibling. Um, Polymon thinks that this is a sign that they're having an affair, uh, and so he throws her out, shaves her head, etc., etc. Um, eventually, it is everything sort of comes out. Um, Patikos, uh, in trying to sort of comfort Glycera and get everything back on 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 track, um, recognizes the. Uh, various bits of embroidered cloth and things like this that, that she was exposed with as a baby. This is a thing that we see over and over in Greek literature, Greek myth, um, and even in new comedy of, from Menander, is this idea of sort of recognizing people, recognizing babies who have been left out by some distinctive feature or some distinctive uh, token that's been left with them. So Patikos recognizes that uh, Glycera is his daughter who was exposed back in the day. Um, Moshion, who overhears this revelation, realizes that uh, she is his, she's his sister and that uh, Patikos is his father as well. So they have their big reunion and then the play uh, in, in the final act, Polymon is sort of rec reconciled to this whole thing, and uh, he takes uh, Glycera to be his wife rather than just his mistress. So it's a series of misunderstandings based on a lack of information, uh, etc., etc. Again, it, running very much the way that Samia does, or uh, very much the way that Aspis does, um, this economy of dramatic irony, where, pe where characters make the wrong choices because they don't have information uh, that they need to make the right choice, whereas we, the audience, do know that information. Um, because that, that's revealed to us very early on. Uh, so we get misapprehension, uh, the goddess who gives us the prologue here. And so this is the thing that I find really interesting about it. Like chance in Aspis, um, Misapprehension sort of sets the whole thing in motion, but misapprehension takes a, even, I think, a more direct hand in the action, because at the end of her, her prologue, and this is another delayed prologue, so we would have had the first scene where um, Polymon cuts Glycera's hair, and then we would get this prologue. But at the end of this prologue, misapprehension says, I've lit this fire to help the future on, so that our man should go in, should get into a rage. He's not like this by nature, but I led him on to start the revelations, and that they should find their family at last. If any was disgusted at all this, and thought what happened a complete disgrace, then he must change his mind. By will of God, evil can, turn, can quickly turn to good. Farewell, my friends, be kind to us and watch the rest. So, we've got misapprehension the goddess here saying i've set this whole thing up polymon would not normally get this upset about this but in order to facilitate this reunion of glycera potikos and moshion i need I, i'm going to make him madder than he normally would be and i'm going to uh, we're gonna we're going to have like hair ashamed by having her hair cut because that's going to set in motion the set of events that uh, eventually lead to this reconciliation. So we can accept that in, in the scheme of sort of Greek drama because this idea of fate and the gods controlling human activity is 
central to tragedy especially but we've also got this bit here um, if any was disgusted at all this and thought what's happened a complete disgrace then he must change his mind so we've got this really interesting bit where misapprehension says even if you thought what just happened was bad and again this was a, a quite severe public shaming of Glacara um, even if you the audience thought that that was bad you should not think that and I, because I the goddess and telling you not to think that. This is a very interesting bit in the in the prologue here.